welcome to another booktube video from me lauren from lauren and the books and as you can see we've moved location in the summer david and i have a little swap around where we move the sofa in front of my bookshelves um and we did it yesterday and we've been saying it feels like we're on holiday because things have moved around a bit what i'm mostly excited about is the fact that my yellow chair has now moved into the bay window and we've done it so that i've got a lamp next to it now and it's not facing the telly so it means that of an evening i can see it reading looking at my bookshelves just having a lovely time so i'm really looking forward to doing that anyway today's video is a library haul i went to the library yesterday um we're in april 2021 um and we're just in the U in england here we're just coming out we're just beginning to ease well, i say just beginning to we're about two weeks into easing of some covid restrictions which means that the libraries are now open for browsing which is amazing news i'm very very happy to be back browsing in the library i have been using my library throughout the pandemic um, to reserve books and then you can go and collect them and you were collecting them literally at the door um, but now you can browse in the library which was so good and something I haven't done for like over a year so it was amazing so I collected them all yesterday two bags of them um, and then they not yesterday sorry Friday um, and they've been oh David sitting in that very yellow chair I mentioned earlier oh is it nice Oh, it's lovely. Really nice. um, and they've been in bags because I was going to get them home and disinfectant them. Um, and I thought, oh, I don't know if that will damage the books. So what I've just done is just left them for two days. Um, so here we are. So, yeah, um, let's go through the books that I've got out from the library. So the first four are cookbooks, um, which is really exciting. And actually, my library, when I went in there on Friday, had a... Um, a massive cookbook stand so they bought lots and lots of cookbooks um, from the non-fiction part of the library and laid them all out and I was in my element I love cookbooks and I own a lot of cookbooks um, but now I'm a vegetarian I'm very wary of buying cookbooks said cookbooks loads <laughs> cookbooks that um, are majority meat um, or majority or, or like fish and things like that like because I don't eat those things so um, it, the, using the library to look at recipe books instead of saying cookbooks <laughs> um is very very helpful so i've got out four um and i had a little flip for them yesterday and it's very very exciting so the first one i've got is original flavor which is caribbean recipes from home this is by craig and sean mccanniff um and i when I, when i was in the library i didn't didn't look i just thought caribbean food i'm interested in that and then the same with the others and thought i'd have a look at them when i got back now i had a brief look through and as i was looking through i was like oh no jamaican beef patties jerk burger curry prawns cook oh and then like a lot of meat but there's actually a whole section in this which i was not aware of um called let's find it I tell. I think it's I tell. Anyway, it's a Rastafarian way of eating that is healthy, natural and vegan. So there is a whole chapter in here um, which is vegan, which is amazing. Now, I'm not vegan, I'm vegetarian, but obviously we'll be eating that. So things like yam and p pumpkin curry, um, butter bean, sweet potato and okra stew, a plantain bean burger, which I was very excited about. But David maintains that he doesn't like, bur uh, he doesn't like bananas, therefore he won't like plantain. But I'm going to see what I can do. And this, which we're going to make in the week, actually, aren't we, David? Jerk spice lentil bolognese. Mm. I don't know how the Italians will feel about that, but uh, it looks lovely. So, yeah. And there's also um, a section on um, drinks and... Um, sweet things and stuff which obviously are vegetarian as well so yeah excited about that never done any caribbean cooking in my life so very excited now the next one i got is persiana by sabrina gayor now um a, a while ago david and i um with my cousin laura and her, my cousin laura's husband tom um they used to own a cafe uh, near to where we live and we used to help them out um every month and run a supper club and these supper clubs used to be themed and we did all sorts um from sort of like German cooking to American, like South Asian. Um, and one time we did Persian and Laura had this cookbook. Um, and whenever we used to sort of like look through for inspiration and stuff, I always found myself looking at this cookbook because I just thought it was so lovely. Now, Persian food is my flavours. Rose, love rose, pistachios, rice pudding, like hummus, things like that, falafel, delicious. But there's a lot, a lot of lamb in this book as well. So it's not really worth me owning it. Um, but the dips and stuff are amazing. So for example, and everything looks so pretty. I think it's where it's sort of like got lots of rose petals on. Yogurt, cucumber and mint sounds nice. Persian bejeweled rice sounds nice. That's chicken. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of meat in here. Yeah, literally every page I'm going on to is meat. 
Pui lentil and quinoa salad with lemon and sumac. That looks nice. Pomegranate tabula cups. Oh, that looks lovely. Turkish white bean salad. Oh, we seem to be into vegetarian land here. Quinoa salad. Look, quinoa as well. Yeah, so... I really enjoyed looking through this and have never owned it, so I thought I would get it again and have a look at this. Now, this one was purely a sort of cover pickup, and I did recognise the name, Olia Hercules. I don't know if maybe she was on um, MasterChef to begin with. Um, anyway, this is a culinary journey through Georgia, Azerbaijan, and beyond. Now, these are not places that I have done any cooking from before. Um, and when I picked this book up, I thought it was beautiful, but on reflection, when I got it home, I was like, you idiot, it's got a pig on it, it's got a cow on it, it's got this on it, it's gonna be full of meat. However, it has got an aubergine on it and a pomegranate. So yeah, I had a little look and I'll be honest, it's not set out in my favourite way for cookbooks to be set out. It looks beautiful and the food photography is lovely, but this sort of like, not really in very many steps. Um, the, I, I feel like the, the <laughs> this is very picky of me, but like it doesn't tell you, there's no differentiation between what you, the ingredients and the thing. And I, I really like that in a recipe. And yeah, there's not, there's not photos for every recipe as well. So yeah, I will have a look through this. Um, but yeah, this is, it says here is the Caucasus, which is a vibrant region that bridges Europe and Asia. Um, and this celebrates the food from there, which is not a region I am familiar with. And then the last book, uh, the last cookbook I got was Ellie Pear's Fast Days and Feast Days. Eat well, feel great all week long. Now, I'm not keen on a book that says, Minnie, are you coming up? Come on. Yeah. Um, I'm not keen on a book that has the word fast in it, um, but I have Ellie Pear's book Green, which is a vegetarian cookbook, and it's brilliant and I really like it. Now, Ellie Pear is a pescatarian, which David is, so um, this, this means that the majority of this is vegetarian. And some of the stuff in here just looks lovely. And also, it's just set out really beautifully and it looks really nice. This is sweet potato, lentil, kale and coconut curry. We've got the picture of the recipe here. We've got different colour with a little chat about the recipe. We've got the ingredients down the side and then the method. That's how I like a cookbook. It's just got really nice things. Basement, rare bit. What else? Blue cheese polenta with mushrooms and hazelnuts. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have a, a good look through that. So those were the four cookbooks that I got out from the library. Um, then the next two I've got. Now this one, um, I've been meaning to get my hand on some of these. These are... Um, uh, uh, retellings of fairy tales done by various um, modern authors. This is Hansel and Greta, retold by Jeanette Winterson. Now, I know there's a select, there's a, a whole section of these, like they look like board books, but they are actually there's there's more words in them than there are um, photo uh, than there are pictures. Um, but I know Mallory Blackman's done another one. There's quite a few of these, um, and yeah, this one was just in the library, and I was like, oh, I need to buy it. And I'm sort of glad I did buy, uh, uh, get it out from the library, actually, because I thought it was smaller. I didn't realise it was this big. Um, so yeah, this is a retelling of Hansel and Gretel told by Jeanette Winterson. Uh, so the next two I've got are um, Little Women inspired stories. So in May, I'm taking part in something that I've dubbed Little Women, uh, where I'm reading Little Women, and then I'm going to be reading um, books inspired by Little Women, retellings of Little Women. Um, and the first one I've got is Becoming Joe by Sophie McKenzie, and this says it's a modern retelling of Little Women, and this is a YA book. Um, and it just says here, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, four sisters whose stories are forever imprinted on our hearts. But what if their story was told now? <laughs> That's all it's given you. So yeah, so this will be about. Little Women and then I've got March by Geraldine Brooks which is um, Little Women Rita or I don't know if it's retold but it's from the perspective of their father um, who's away um, in the American Civil War um, so yeah I thought that'd be an interesting um, uh, point of view to, to read it from and also I've just seen that um, this is, was this was on the Richard and Judy um, British Book Awards in 2006 which was long before I started booktube and actually where i used to get my reading recommendations for so i'm surprised i haven't read that already um and then the last oh no there is another cookbook in here oh apologies there is another cookbook so then another cookbook um is nigel slater's green feast uh, and this is the spring summer version um so this is a purely vegetarian cookbook and that he's got an autumn winter one which obviously is lovely but i don't need at the moment because we're in spring now um and it's seasonal cooking um with lots of different things to make now what i will say is that although i love and i mean love nigel slater's food writing and his descriptions of food like his book christmas chronicles is one of my favorite books ever um i'm not mad on his recipes and i think that's for the same reason that i said before is that it all sort of flows into one page this looks amazing though beetroot carrots and sugar snaps look at that very colorful very beautiful tomatoes basil and breadcrumbs um 
yeah it feels like i feel like the the instructions feel um sort of quite loose rather than sort of step by step um hello halloumi melon and chili but yeah this these are um he's got two of these uh vegetarian cookbooks so yeah this is spring and summer and um I'd always wanted to get my hands on it. I think I might even have put this on my Christmas list, but I didn't get it, the, maybe the autumn winter one. But I'm always nervous of it because I know I'm not, if I was to reach for a cookbook to cook something from, I wouldn't always be reaching for Nige. Uh, and then the last three, I think are all, yeah, they are. Um, they are all um, non-fiction books um, with, about rape. Uh, yeah, about race. So this one, um, I've not heard of this before. This is White Feminism um, by Koa Beck. And it says here, from the suffragettes to influencers and who they leave behind. Um, and this is about white feminism. So yeah, as I said, I've never heard of this before. Um, and this is from journalist Koa Beck's ambitious Harvard research-based deep dive into how feminism has been commodified and racialized and the revolutionary way of thinking that could drive a new movement. Um, and then this, which I had heard of um, before, this is Diversify by June Sarpong. Um, June is um, a British TV presenter and has recently been made head of diversity at the BBC um, and this is about how to challenge inequality and why we should and um, I recently listened to June on um, Derma O'Leary's podcast People Just People um, and it was really really interesting she's ever so warm and lovely and is such a font of knowledge so yeah I'm um, looking forward to reading this I actually had this on my wish list on Audible for a long time um, not on my wish list on, yeah on my wish list um, but yeah, I'm going to read it. So there's that. And then the last one is uh, The Clap Back, Your Guide to Calling Out Racial Stereotypes, Racist Stereotypes by Elijah Lowell. Um, and this was actually one that I had on reservation, so I didn't have to browse for this one. Um, so yeah, this is about identifying people saying racist things and you calling them out and stuff. And definitely something that I felt nervous of in the past and am well trying to school myself on saying, actually, can you not say things like that? Um, and yeah. I'm looking forward to reading that. So those are my books um, that I've got from the library. Have you guys been able to go to the library during lockdown? Have you recently been able to go to the library? It's a lovely place to be, isn't it? Especially when you can get all those cookbooks. I'm gonna try and hold these up now, but I know they're gonna be heavy. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to hold those up. Um, let me know what you've been reading recently and I'll see you all again soon for another booktube video. Goodbye.